Greetings, my abhuman friends, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video where we talk about the forces of the Imperial Guard. For those of you new to my channel, I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, or GDN if you'd like the short version. I put out 40k content every single day for your lore needs. If you enjoy these videos, please click the like button, or maybe even subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. Today, we are going to talk a bit about 40k's equivalent of ogres, particularly the ogres of the sister universe of Warhammer Fantasy. Rest in peace. So, without further ado, let us learn more about these dull-witted, yet extremely strong and loyal soldiers of the Imperium, shall we? The Ogryn, or the Homo sapiens gigantus, are a huge and physically powerful abhuman mutant, often employed as shock troopers in the Imperial Guard. Ogryns possess many traits prized by the Imperium. They are brutally strong and completely loyal, although very limited intellectually, which kinda restricts their battlefield role to simple and direct assault. They come from cold and barren planets with high gravity, such as Anarch Zeta, which is why they appear larger, heavier and bulkier compared to regular humans. An ogre in speech is much the same as an orc's, albeit without the Cockney accent. The most famous ogre in Imperial service is Nork Dedog, but we'll talk about him in a few minutes. The Ogrins are the toughest and largest soldiers commonly used by the regiments of the Imperial Guard. Originating from cold, barren, high-gravity prison planets, settled many millennia before the founding of the Imperium of Man, the Ogrins' distant ancestors were once normal humans during the Dark Age of Technology. Thousands of years in the harsh terrains and brutal living conditions of their prison planets after the start of the Age of Strife brought the fall of humanity's first interstellar civilization, forced their ancestors' bodies to adapt to their hostile environments. The adaptation to the high-gravity environment is the reason for the Ogryn's thick skin, powerfully muscular build, and resulting huge size. Though their adaptations led them to increase in physical size and strength, the Ogryn's intelligence declined to below average human levels. As the planetary conditions, barren, cold, little food, and long periods of starvation that caused their mutation required only primitive survival instincts, part of their adaptation involved the loss of the ability for more complex intellectual thought. That makes sense, since philosophical matters were not necessary in an environment marked by starvation and a constant fight for life. Ogrins are said to be even less intelligent than some orcs. However, the truth is that their intellects did not actually devolve, but became much more focused on matters such as survival. Ogrins are claustrophobic, which means that they can only with great difficulty be loaded into armored carrier vehicles to be transported to the battlefield, and can only ride in vehicles if a commanding officer is present. As many as half a squad can be mounted in a chimera, and, as you'd expect, this significantly slows their deployment speed. The most tedious to pronounce Imperial organization aka Tive's Chamber Notaries, for Planetary Census and Abhumans, is a subdivision of the Adeptus Administratum that oversees the classification and recognition of stable abhuman strains within the Imperium. Of these, 46 types are now listed as extinct, and no records have been received of a further 12 strains for over a generation suggesting that they too have died out or been assimilated back into the general population of mankind. The status of the remaining 15 abhuman races is quite varied, and there is permanent disagreement about their specific classification among the adepts of the Tithe Chamber notaries. The most noteworthy and contentious matter concerning the adepts is the Ogryn matrix of abhuman strains. This complex group is currently officially listed as seven distinct types. Alpha, Theta, Type 4, Type 7A, HS Gigantus Gigantus, 
H.S. Gigantus Cranopus, and the mysterious Grey Ogrens. But many in the chamber doubt that these are all separate subspecies, and yet another official revision of the classification is therefore pending, in another few decades. When the Ogrens were rediscovered on their homeworld during the Great Crusade, the Imperial Army saw their military potential and began recruiting the Ogrens as close combat soldiers. The recruitment process was relatively easy by Imperial standards, as Ogrins hardly needed any training. Most Ogrins are quite capable of bringing down almost any enemy, and their natural close combat skills make them great assault troops. The officers of the Imperial Army, and after the Horus Heresy reshaped the Imperium, those of the Imperial Guard, also found that Ogrins were extremely loyal, once introduced to the Imperial State religion of faith in the Emperor. They are known to believe and do anything their leaders say and ask, and see the orders they receive as having come down the chain of command from the Emperor himself. On the other hand, Ogrins are known for their inability to understand complex commands and tactics. This simple-mindedness has also contributed to the big abhuman's reputation as being notoriously easy to corrupt to the service of chaos, particularly by the temptations of the blood god Korn. Many Ogrins, for example, fought in the Vraxian traitor militia during the infamous Siege of Vrax. Their skin is extremely thick, and Ogrins can ignore wounds that would cripple or kill a normal man. As they are brutal and direct, they favor knuckle dusters and knives for close combat. Ogrins, in Imperial service, are issued with special large auto shotguns known as Ripper Guns for ranged combat and clubbing in melee. The use of frag grenades is also popular among Ogrins. Although believed to possess extremely low intelligence, some Ogrins may have a slightly higher level of intellect than others. This boosts their chances to be chosen as candidates for the Biochemical Ogrin Neural Enhancement Procedure, also known as BONE. These relatively smart Ogrins are given the title Boneheads, and since they are able to understand more complex orders, they are placed in command of a squad of normal, unaugmented Ogrins with a role similar to that of a sergeant. Now, concerning Bonads and several other types of Ogrins, I will cover them in a separate video. Among the more famous Imperial Guard regiments who use Ogrins are the Cadian Shock Troopers, the Katakan Jungle Fighters, the Savlar Chem Dogs, and the Kanax Call Takers. And since I mentioned him in the beginning, it is also time for you to meet Nork Dedog, Hero of the Imperium. Nork Dedog is a legend in his own lifetime. An Ogrin whose fighting abilities as an Imperial Guard soldier are almost as astonishing as mental development that can only be called precocious for one of his kind. Due to his unusual mental acuity, he quickly came to the attention of the Commissars of the Imperial Guard, and Nork soon found himself placed on special duty. Nork's reputation for loyalty is unsurpassed, and his skills as a bodyguard have been in high demand by Imperial officers across the galaxy. Nork was selected by the Scola Progenium to serve in the Imperial Guard due to his ability to write his name and count to four, and even speak fluently and understand orders without hesitation or difficulty, all this being a rare milestone in Ogren development, as the majority of Ogrens would find these tasks very difficult he was taken out of the normal stream of Imperial Guard warfare and underwent biochemical neural enhancement similar to the process used on Boneheads, as well as extensive martial training. Nork was then assigned as the Ogrin bodyguard of Colonel Grice, the commanding officer of the 2nd Katakan Regiment of the Imperial Guard. Nork is a genius by Ogrin standards and is also the only Ogren to have been ever assigned directly to serve a commissar. He was assigned to guard the life of Colonel Grice, and did so very faithfully, 
The sight of the colonel and his Ogryn bodyguard became a familiar one during the second Catacan's four-year-long campaign on Baylor. The Bonefin colonel screaming out his orders while shells burst around him and bullets ricocheted off Nork's dense skull. Colonel Grice implicitly trusted Nork with his life, which had been saved by his loyal bodyguard and friend on many occasions, most notably at the disaster at Breakback Hill, where Nork pulled out an entire damaged Chimera transport vehicle across the battlefield, when asked by his commander to simply retrieve a medikit. He then carried his wounded leader out of the battle and to safety, while being shot at by thousands of enemy troops and seemingly feeling no pain. On another occasion, Nork carried the badly wounded Katakan commander back from the disaster at Hill Gamma Zero, when Orc warboss Ogluck Gitzmasha and a mob of his hardest mega knobs charged the Imperial Guard's command dugout, Nork Dedog was the only one to stand his ground, beside sub overlord Van Vambold. Nork killed the massive greenskin warlord with a single headbutt. The remaining orcs were so awestruck that they retreated rather than face the angry Ogryn who killed their warboss. Nork's own body had proven time and again to be the most effective shield an Imperial Guard officer can have against enemy fire. Nork will do his utmost to protect his master from harm, even going as far as to throw himself in front of enemy fire. On the world of Fallax 4, Nork selflessly leapt on top of an enemy grenade that would have otherwise killed Commander Rishep crushing both the grenade and the grenadier who threw it to a bloody pulp beneath his massive bulk. The resultant explosion was muffled by Nork's body, and the Ogryn bodyguard seemingly noticed his resulting shrapnel wounds with only passing curiosity. Nork has personally saved the lives of over a hundred Imperial Guard officers, and by doing so has been instrumental in securing victories on dozens of worlds. Though the Ogryn has a large collection of medals, laurels, citations and gifts, Nork cares not for trinkets and baubles. He instead chooses to continue to serve simply for the content feeling of fighting alongside a good friend. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the abhuman Ogryns for today. Like I said before, I will be doing another video on Ogryn types and their roles, such as the Boneheads, Gunluggers, Bulgrins, and more. Would you like to have an Ogryn bodyguard and friend? Let me know in the comments below, along with any other lore questions or thoughts you might have. If you'd like to support my channel and help its continued existence, there is a link to my Patreon page in the video description where you can get rewards for even a couple of dollars a month. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you a great day. The Emperor Protects